This episode of the Soupcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch, roast to order, veteran known coffee company. They are fair trade, certified USD organic, and integrity is their core value. They got great products. If you're looking for a light roast, medium, dark, or flavored, they got everything you want over at ironbeancoffee.com. Again, that is ironbeancoffee.com, where they are. America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Soulcast is also brought to you by Gangland and Nomad's Grandpa's Cheese Barn. Have you ever found yourself driving on I-71 and thought, God damn, I could go for a hunk of cheese right now? Well, you're in luck. Located across the interstate of the barn with the huge Confederate flag for a roof, our business was satisfied all your cheese needs. We have cheddar, Colby Jack, Formunda, and of course, the original from our grandpa Rick, Grandpa Dick's Cheese, made from a secret family recipe. Our secret recipe will have you saying, that's not what I expected. Get yours, get yours now while supplies last. Can I ask a question at the risk of pissing someone off? Why, why, do, why do people from Ohio, like, what, what's the deal with the Confederate flag? Like, that, that wasn't our side. That's. Kentucky was okay. neutral, weren't they? Yeah, I thought they were. They they did not openly rebel, right? Just saying. Of course, no one technically flew under that flag. That flag's not a real thing. But Kentucky never flew under that flag. All right, Jared. All right. Let's go ahead and get into the our Ask Slipcast episode. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Well, if it's anything like our second ad read, it's going to be an interesting episode. <laughs> We've given too much power to the plebes. <laughs> <laughs> Nomad says, damn straight. <laughs> Penguin right. says, whoa. I don't know if you like being called a plebe. I don't know if he appreciated that. Uh oh, we have a mod revolt. I oh god, I. They said mod mod, mod revolt, and then my ch my chair started to sink. <laughs> all right, let's. We've given them too uh, much power. We, all right, this is the ask Slipcast question where you ask, we answer. And if you want to ask, hop on our Discord, which you can find down in the doobly doos. Uh, <laughs> You can you can join us, check us out, check out all the commotion that happens and all the shenanigans that happens in our Discord. And if you want to ask a question, you can become a fellow patron where you can then ask a question and we will answer them. So that's what exactly what we'll do here, Jared. And we'll, well start... I just want to say that uh, the freshman role in the Discord server is also mm -hmm. able to ask Sleuthcast. So you basically... Okay earn that by just being active in the discord server and not being a dick. So you don't have to actually, it's, you don't have to, you don't technically have to pay to ask. Okay. Just want well, to point that out. Well, you're in luck then. <laughs> All right. Uh, probably the big, probably the uh, question from no, or excuse me, not nomad, uh, starting off with gangland here. Did Joey Brunk just save Holtman's job? No. Holtman's no. fine. There's, there's way too many people thinking that Holtman's job is on the line, that it, he's on a short leash. He's, if he doesn't do well, he's going to be fired. He's fired. There are certain Twitter accounts that just really like to... My mic stand broke. Guys, the, the, the mods announced a revolt, and now everything's going downhill for me. Um, the <laughs> Let's see if I can put it back. No, oh, maybe. So, yeah, 
Kyle, you talk. I talk. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, there, there, there are certain certain people on on social media who's just trying to run away with it and try to get everybody's attention to try to get themselves attention essentially by I just say, oh, hey, gu- hey guys, I, Holtman's job is on the line here. Hey, hey, hey guys, hey guys, Holtman's not a good coach. Just, uh, just these hey guys, dumb, I've just cherry these picked. Dumb... I've cherry picked some data. Now everyone get mad at me and quote tweet me and spread my Twitter account by the same asshole who put together a low light film of CJ Stroud. I, that's right. I said it. Tell, tell him I called him an asshole. If you know who I'm talking about, tell him I told him he's an asshole. All right. All right. Let's, let's go on to a next question here. A Duncan from the discord. Uh, Duncan says, having gone to West Virginia, West Virginia fans really don't like a lot of teams. Goes on to say, Pitt, Pitt, um, Penn State, Ohio State, Texas, let's goes on. But as a Buckeye, it feels weird to spread my hate around, which is vending of malice is more reflective of the national scene. I, guess I think it's adorable really... that West Virginia thinks about Ohio State because I promise you this, Ohio State doesn't waste one fucking second thinking about West Virginia. Yeah. I never really thought that West Virginia really hated Ohio State a lot. I mean, it's... I mean, there, there's, there... yeah, it's a border rivalry. Listen, it's... Urban Meyer once told a kid who was between Ohio state and Michigan. Uh, he was, rec- he, Urban Meyer was recruiting this kid. He was between Ohio, St- excuse me, between Ohio state and West Virginia. And Urban Meyer looked him straight in the face and says, we don't recruit against West Virginia. Are you in or are you out? The kid decided he was in. So if that, that's about as much time as any Ohio State coach has spent thinking about West Virginia since they played what feels like eons ago. I think they had like a season opener in the 90s at one point. It was mm-hmm. probably under John Cooper, but. Uh, unrelated to you. I'm sure you. also I'm also sure Penn State spends zero time thinking about West Virginia. I know Pitt West or Pitt. Yeah. Pitt West Virginia is a thing. Um, did he say Texas? Yeah, Texas as well. I, I promise you Texas spends no time thinking about West Virginia. Yeah. Uh, okay. Zach on a scale of one to 10, how sure, how sure are we? Well, uh, Maybe I can't read here. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, how sure are should we be that Branham is a one and done? Honestly, I'm like fifty fifty right now, and that, I think that, a lot of exactly it just one. a lot of it just depends upon like he has a lot of momentum right now. He's looked really good. He has a lot of momentum right now. Um, to me, if I'm a coach. If I'm a N or an NFL, an NBA coach, an NBA scout, the thing I'd be looking at him right now, and I'd be saying, "Okay, but where's the consistency?" Because he's brilliant at times, absolutely brilliant at times, but at other times, not. He also like has a tendency to just sort of disappear, right? Um, mm-hmm. And like I said, he's he's been he's been good. He's been very good. Um, he's on a really good streak as of late. If he can, if he can like continue the con- current level of consistency he's been at lately throughout the rest of the postseason, then, uh, you know, that will probably push him towards one and dunning. If he continues to be as inconsistent as he's been all year, then probably not so much. Like to me, yep. the big thing with him is consistency. Yep. All right. um, An out of left field question from Duncan here. If you're a Zamboni driver, 
Okay. I'm really glad you finished that sentence with me being a human. If you're a Zamboni driver and you missed a spot, is it more embarrassing to leave it or go back? How? And like, I'm not trying to disrespect Zamboni driver, or the Zamboni machine. Um, how essential is it? You, you, you want to. You must. So you, you, you got to go back. You got to go back. Because it's just like, like if you're, if you're one of the kids with the mops at the basketball game, if you miss like a big yes, puddle of yeah, sweat. That, that, that's what I meant, Austin. Yeah, you have to go back because it's more embarrassing if you. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, uh, we so we have discourse in the Discord. Um, sure. <laughs> it's more embarrassing to go back and fix it, in my opinion, but I have anxiety. Um, all you have to do is go in straight lines. Listen, that's much easier said than done. Humans aren't humans aren't designed to go in straight lines. We aren't good at it. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, yeah, thank you, Austin. Have you tried mowing? Have you ever mowed the lawn? You will miss a spot. I'm not going much faster mowing the lawn, gangland. I still fuck it up sometimes. Right, Listen, we got, we got... How, I need to know how essential is it that you hit every spot in the ice? Because if... I always drink when I mow the lawn, Nomad. That's a lot. doesn't even matter what time of day it is. You have to drink. Because, like, if it's like leaving a puddle of sweat on the floor, if you're one of the kids at the mop at the basketball game and someone could slip on it and get hurt, then you got to clean up the sweat no matter what. Like, you can't miss it. Is it that important? It changes. It's Gangland is insisting it is very important and it changes how the puck moves. Then you go back and you get it. You be embarrassed. You just got to be embarrassed. You got to do it right. If it's that important. All right. We, we got five questions from Nomad here. Oh, oh, good Lord. How bad does Ohio State need the number four seed in the Big Ten tournament? Uh, a, how bad on a scale of one to ten, like ten meeting, absolutely they need it. Honestly, I'm going to say pretty high. I'd say like a, say like a six, seven. I'd, I'd say a seven. I, I think it's very important, especially what we've seen lately the past couple of weeks. Just they just looked just tired. Give them, give them that extra buy, and it'll, it'll do wonders for them. But it's an extra game, Austin. It is an extra game. It's... Yeah a team that's already on tired legs right now. Um, it's extra rest. It's one less game. Um, honestly, Kyle, and like, I, this is, this is going to go back to me being like potentially too negative with the team. Like they're not winning the tournament anyway. <laughs> um, that's just, that's how I feel. They're not winning the tournament anyway. So, um, no, I'd be a fake fan, Gangland. I'd be a fake fan if I was lying to you. Yeah, boo me. Boo me. It's fine. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to blow smoke up your ass. Should Brunk start from here on out? I, I think you just got to trust Holtman on that. Uh, I think it also just depends upon, like, like are, are you up. starting him over Zed Key at this point? Are you taking away minutes from Kyle Young at this point? And can we base that off of one game? Like, let's not be a prisoner bigger, of the think, moment. Let's not fall prey the, to recency bias. The, the bigger question is not so much should Brunk start, it's should Brunk get a lot of minutes? Should he get 20 plus minutes? Again, like, who else is available? And... Yeah, exactly. No matter. Play the hot hand. Yes. I, and if it's like, and if it's like the Nebraska game where there wasn't really a hot hand, 
put Gronk in. Yeah, see no, what, like see, if you, see what the big guy can do. If you put if you start Zed Key instead, and if Zed Key is struggling, bench him. Bench like that's one of the great things about basketball is like to this point they've had like Kyle Young has had starter minutes but not starting. Like it's it's and a lot of that has to do with Zed Key being in foul trouble. So granted, but I don't know, like Kyle Young hasn't been st- like, you, it's not like choosing a football quarterback or if, like you, you don't have to like s- pick a guy and stick with it. You know what I mean? Like you can, you can play it around, you can move it. All right. Um, do, do 40 times matter in the NFL combine or does separation ability matter more? Well, wh- when you say, do they matter? What, the, what are you actually asking? Should they matter? Because they do matter. You will, you will lose or gain draft spots because of your 40. Uh, Florida buck. Uh, is it like red chili? Red chili. The, the there's a great Chinese place on campus. Get that. Um, now I, 40 times, I think 40 times to a degree does matter, but when you're trying to, when you're really trying to determine, oh, a, oh, the four, four, two is not good compared to someone who runs a four, three, two, like it's, I, I think, I think if you're within a certain margin, it, it really shouldn't, it really doesn't matter. Well, and especially, especially like the the big thing right now, everybody's talking about is the Georgia defensive tackle and how, oh, fast he ran the forty and all that. It honestly, it does not really matter. And, and it's unless still he's impressive, going, though, it, it, it is impressive unless he's going for a to dude that after, big. And, and, it's still unless impressive. he's trying to trying to run after Mahomes from behind, <laughs> out in space there. It, but even then, you're not running it in a straight a lot line, ma- yeah, and you're also not doing it in your lot. underwear. Yeah. Uh, yep. I I don't even. Here's the thing, I don't even know why they make the big dudes even run forties. Why is a defensive tackle or an offensive guard even running a forty? I don't care. Does anyone care? Like, let him run the first ten yards, then just let him stop. Nomad says I do lots of running in my underwear. I mean, I hope you're, I, I also do a lot of running in my underwear. Now I'm wearing gym shorts over my underwear because I'm a civilian of the, I'm a civilian. You, I am a citizen of a society. Yeah. Hey, Jer- does, well, the H-O, you, does the HOA you, allow that, Nomad? Can you wear your underwear while driving a Zamboni? I would assume you'd be wearing extra long underwear while driving a Zamboni. Well, how does one get to become a Zamboni driver? I that's, I would assume you essentially have to be the manager of the ice. Like, I don't know what they I don't know what they call the person who's in charge of the ice. Like, like I like they call like a like the guy does football is like a groundskeeper or whatever. I assume that there's an ice keeper, and I assume that that's the guy driving the like he's I I doubt his job is Zamboni driver. He is a person who is in charge of the ice, and as an added perk slash responsibility, depending upon how he feels about it, or they, depending upon how they feel about it, then. It's also their perk and or responsibility to to drive the Zamboni. Yep. Uh, do the number of draft picks per school actually matter? For recruiting, it helps. For recruiting, it helps. Sorry, everyone was talking about underwear and grounds. Also known as a groundskeeper. The- it's just a facilities manager. They're also known as a groundskeeper. So you're saying that the person in charge of the ice is called a groundskeeper? Really? I mean, I guess the ice is on the ground. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough, I guess. 
Uh, sorry, Kyle. What was the question? Do number of draft picks per school actually matter? Uh, and you were saying for recruiting, it does, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It's a thing you sell on the recruiting trail. 100%. All right. I think this is a good point here to let's go ahead and take a quick ad break here, Jared, and we'll answer the rest of the questions we have. All right. Iron Bean Coffee. Um, I, let, I was letting you guys know that you can buy soap at ironbeancoffee.com. So that's a thing you can do. Uh, you can also buy chocolate at ironbeancoffee.com. Uh, they have both. Uh, they have chocolate barks. One is a banana and vanilla flavor wafer white chocolate bark. The other one is a peanut butter and pretzel milk chocolate bark. Um, the well, the I want the 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 milk chocolate one is also a coffee bark, and I don't believe the crazy monkey is. Uh, you can back you can check me on that one. So yeah, and then the iron bars of soap, which are which are made of soap. They're not made of iron or steel. Or anything like that. There are those like stainless steel bars of soap. I, I, I feel like those are. Are those bullshit? I don't know. But th these are these are actually made. These are actually made of soap. Just just in case you were worried. These are actually made of soap. Uh, one of them is called the Cinnamon AF. Um, I saw it last time we were doing this ad read. Or last time I was talking about the soap during the ad read. I saw. uh I saw Gangland say, will, will the cinnamon uh, burn the boys? And I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. But I assume it's like peppermint, right? Like, what well, the first time you use a peppermint soap, it's an experience, right? But if you keep using it, you just get used to it. So I assume it's the same thing, right? Sometimes I will purposefully stop using peppermint soap so I don't get used to it. So that I can, like get that like weird peppermint experience all over again. It's the best. Uh, uh, so yeah, there's the cinnamon AF. Uh, there's the heavy cream bar. Um, a little coffee and a lot of cream make this a wicked smooth bar. That's right. Uh, these I believe are all, all five ounce bars. Yeah. All five ounce soap bars, only $6. So, Hey, if you're getting, if you're getting some coffee, if you're getting some coffee, just like, let's throw a bar of soap in there too. Because if, if listen, you can't really drink coffee, not, not hot coffee, effectively well while in the shower. So this is the next best thing, right? Like may, maybe if it was a, maybe if it was a cold, maybe if it was a cold brewed coffee and you had like a lid on it, you could drink that in the shower, but you're I, the hot coffee in the shower. I don't think it's going to work out for you. Oh, hell Yeah. Hell yeah, it's it, but it, that's a shower beer. That's cold, right? I just don't think I would drink hot coffee in the shower. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe you got a you got a nice thing with a lid on it. Maybe it's possible. But if you're not that adventurous, having soap made with coffee, next best thing. Next best thing. So uh, if you want to pick up some chocolate or some soap over at ironbeancoffee.com, that is a thing you can do uh, over at ironbeancoffee.com. Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Have you Austin ever had says, pizza in the shower, Jared? <laughs> Listen, maybe. <laughs> I have not. <laughs> now, I've had beer in the shower, but not... <laughs> Not a not food. I don't listen, think I've you, ever had eat, had any type of food in the shower. Listen, you're about to go out for a night of drinking. You're in college, I hope, because I don't I don't know if this is acceptable past like twenty five. So maybe so maybe you're just out of college. You're going out. You're going out for a night of drinking, and you got a pregame in the shower, right? That that's just multitasking. Cause you want to get there early enough. Cause like, if you get there early enough, then like sometimes you can avoid the cover charge. So if you get there, like right, right at the right time, it's still late. So the place is, is going, but maybe you're avoiding the cover charge by getting there a little bit early. You got a pregame in the shower. We're on a time. We're on a time schedule here. You got a pregame in the shower. So you show up to the bar with a decent buzz already. Cause like I ain't made of money. I'm not, I can't drink that much at the bar. 
Because like I said, I'm, I'm in college in this scenario. I, I, I can't be drinking at the bar. I don't have any money. Uh, let's see. Nomad says I've pulled a bottle of liquor into the shower. Okay. You buddy, you might have a problem. Like, I think I got to draw the line somewhere <laughs> and that might be it. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's get another question in here. Would a big 10 tournament championship erase all the disappointments from this season? Yeah. 100%. 100. 100%. Uh, let's see. What is the next number to get retired for Ohio State in either football or basketball? Next number to be retired? Like, I didn't they say they're not retiring football numbers anymore? Am I crazy? Did I make that up? No. Yeah. No. They. Yeah. No. You're right. I think they stated it after Troy Smith won his Heisman. Because there's still people who, who wear the number ten. Yeah, because they they put they put they put uh, Troy Smith's ten in the rafters. Not, you know what I mean, metaphorical metaphorical rafters. Um, but they didn't. I don't believe retire. They no, they didn't. They didn't retire the number ten. People have worn it since. So yeah, Ring of Honor. Um, so they just put the number and the name up there. I don't believe, yeah, they don't actually retire. I think they basically said, we're not going to mm-hmm. retire numbers in football anymore. Yeah. Um, and by the way, is, is Evan Turner's number retired? He's the most recent person to get his name in the rafters pretty, at yeah, the I shot. Think, I, I think so. I think so, but. Uh, Austin says no. Oh, no. Let me look. Yeah, let, let's let's look it up, Kyle. Look it up. Uh, my damn noise gate, that clap doesn't get through anymore. We have a, we have a look it up, look it up, Kyle's situation here. Uh, Kyle's going to see, is Evan Turner's number actually retired or is his name simply in the rafters? February 16th, 2016, at halftime during the Ohio State-Michigan game at Value, C- at Value City Arena, Evan Turner's collegiate number 21 was retired by Ohio State. Who? See, Austin is telling me something different down in the chat. Austin says he has an article that says it isn't. I, got, I don't know. I got, listen. I got multiple listen, articles. Guys, guys, we have a copy and paste. Um, Chicago hanging his number 21 in the ceiling, all-time greats. While his number is not officially retired, the honor cannot be overstated. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Listen, it's fine. Um, bottom guys, can we just point out, by the way, that someone's currently wearing 22? And that that number is retired. So maybe it's, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe it's not, I I'm personally against retiring numbers. I'm, I, I think that they should unretire the numbers and go to a patch. Like someone should be allowed to wear Eddie George's 27, but like it comes with an Eddie George patch on it. Like that to me, like allow the number to stay in rotation, but just like, all right, you want to wear the 27 fine, but you're getting Eddie an Eddie George patch on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or an Eddie George NFT, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if we were to pick a number, honestly, like I can't think of a better number, but, but then again, should you really retire this number <laughs> and, and in football? And that's number seven. Like how many greats <laughs> number well, here's seven, the thing. The number to me, seven that makes it, is. to me, that makes it almost impossible to retire because how do you, yeah. how do you assign that number to one person? Yes, gangland. <laughs> how do you how do you retire the number seven and give it to yeah. just one person? So many great people have worn that at Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like we we've uh, seen not not that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's fine. I I I, uh, I don't like retiring because like if you 
if you switch to the patching system, then you could just keep, you could assign the honor out to people and not worry about like losing a number. I mean, Gamble and Gin are on the top of the list for like the best ever wear seven for sure, but there are so many. Well, and that's the thing. Like, in order to get your name in the rafters right now, or in the Ring of Honor right now, you basically have to win the Heisman. And Stroud, I think, is a real decent shot at that this year. So, it, like, again, they're not going to retire it, but he's, again, if we're talking about, like, who might be the next person to get the name in the Ring of Honor, uh, it's... CJ Stroud, right? You think Young goes back to back? Nah. Yeah, there there's so many there's so many who are number 7 there. Uh, who will what win about the Fields Sloop? Fields War 1. Yeah, who will win the Sloop Cast Big 10 tourney pool? Are we doing one for the Big 10? I thought we were just doing the uh, NCAA Nomad. If Nomad wants to do that too, if he also wants to run that, like, go for it. Absolutely go for it, Nomad, if you want to. Uh, oh, Fields is next in the Ring of Honor. Um, like, you you essentially, like I said, you essentially have to win the Heisman, I think is is basically how they're limiting that now. Yeah. That's a good call, Austin. Austin says retire ninety seven and just put both on it. We don't, we don't, we don't got to say which one. It can be both. I, but again, the like don't retire. Yeah. The don't retire yes. it. Just patch it. If you want to wear ninety seven, it gets a Bosa patch. Does De- does Desmond both says? Damn you, Austin, for both says. That is terrible. I hate you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> should should Desmond be fired for being a complete idiot? Yes. My God. How, what, how are you going to... what he posted on Saturday? Jeez. Al, how... It's not how the do... first time he's done something like this either. Mm. Not to mention he's a... So, I mean, I, I tweeted, and I haven't... I don't even know if I have my, my phone God. on me. I tweeted like, hey, is... Is Desmond stupid? Okay, okay, so was it Chris Fowler? I yes. believe basically tweeted a a bridge that's like lit up for the Ukraine right now. And it's in like it's in blue and yellow, right? And Desmond responds going, "Oh, go blue." Read the fucking room, my guy. Like I like I like, I like Ramsey. I like, Ra- I like reply. I like Ramsey's reply says, "Hey man, Google the news." <laughs> what is worse, that he actually like was dumb enough to think that that was for Michigan, or that he knew it was for the Ukraine and decided to tweet that anyway? The second one is worse, but also like, is it who's what, what, which razor is that? Is that Henlon's razor? That is essentially like, if you have the choose the, the opportunity to choose between malice and ignorance, choose the latter. Um, uh, Florida buck says, no, it's the second one. It's not even Michigan's color blue. Uh, lights are hard. Um, but no, I, I kind of agree with you. Um, cause he's, he's dumb, but I don't think he's not aware of the Ukraine being a thing right now. Dumb. Like he's dumb, but yeah, it's definitely a lighter blue. Um, is that Henlon's razor? Does anyone in the chat know what the hell I'm talking about? Um, okay. Buckeye Squire says, yeah. So I'm assuming that was for me. So, yeah, it's. And it's God, like, oh, my God, it's so fucking tone deaf. It's so fucking tone deaf. And it's not the first time he's done shit like this either. 
Not to mention, he's a total clown for his university. Like, he's not... Like, I know people get mad at Herb Street for, like hating Ohio state, which is ridiculous, but the man's, a, but the man's a professional, like he will call shit as he sees it. And that's not to say yep. he's always right, but he is a professional and he's going to call it as he sees it. And he's not going to be a clown for his university because that's what Desmond Howard is. He's a clown when he's out here trying to act like, Jordan Howard thing was like, no, it's no big deal. Like all of your credibility is gone. My guy. All right. And the last, last question we have here from, from gangland, who's the biggest player for the Buckeyes in the big 10 tournament? I mean, like it's, it's all, I mean, it's Liddell, right? I mean, it has like Ohio State is as good as Liddell. Like, it, if you want to advance in the tournament, your best player has to be playing his best games. Yeah. No, it's 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 definitely Liddell, and we've always talked about oh that second person to kind of ease ease the um the pressure on Liddell, and if he's being covered, who's gonna who's gonna be that second person? Um, yeah, it's other other than that part. I think yeah, yeah, Branham. Um, it, it's it's Liddell, it's Liddell. I mean, yeah, but it has like I said, it has to be your best player playing his best games. Now, mm -hmm. second would be Branham, right? Third would be if like if if we could get like the brunk we had during Michigan State, like if he was playing like that during or, the tournament. Or Wheeler, or Wheeler. Wheeler to me is mostly a facilitator. Um, and like, I know he's probably the best defensive player on the team. Um, at least the best defensive Gangling, guard. Gangling wants to hear number Gangling wants to hear the number three player. I mean, it has to be someone in deep, right? I mean, it has to be someone, maybe Zed key returns to form. Maybe it's Kyle Young, but it has to be someone who's in mm -hmm. the paint yeah. doing like getting rebounds and playing defense it, that it has to be that. Uh, Austin says he has a question that I think he put a late question and asks Loopcast. Someone, ha uh, Buckeye Esquire says Seti Russ Someone has to catch fire from three for March. I think that would be fantastic. Um, I, to me, I, I think I'd rather see that be one of the people who are already on the court, whether it be mm -hmm. Wheeler or, or Liddell or Brenham has been money from three for stretches. Um, they don't have a consistent and, and Russ is probably the close that they have, but they don't really have a, a consistent three point shooter on the team right now. It, it's just not a thing they have on the team. And if anyone's out there going, what about Arns? I got news for you. Check the stats. Yeah. Arns three point percentage has just been plummeting. Last I looked, and I believe this was before the Michigan state game. It was like, 35 38 yep. percent like was, he's not it was it was up near like 40 percent it's now down to 35 percent now yeah it's like it, at this point kyle young is as good a three-point shooter as as justin arns mm -hmm. yeah essentially he's not the best three-point shooting forward on the team yeah, your In fact, he's probably the third best three-point shooting forward on the team right now. Yeah, your best three-point shooter is either Russell or Branham. Um, well, and then, like, is, uh, Liddell has to be up there, too, right? Yeah, L Liddell is, like, the third, fourth. Wheeler, Wheeler third, and then Liddell fourth. So, okay. Lid um, Liddell really close there, but, yeah. Um. That was that was all the questions we had, unless Austin had one more. 
Uh, oh, he said he had another one. Let me look here. Um, he said here, how much will I enjoy Batman on a scale of one to 10? I'm seeing Batman tomorrow. So I'm not really equipped to answer that for you right now. Sorry. The Batman. The Batman. Excuse me. The Batman. I've heard Without... really good things about it. Um, mm -hmm. So just enjoy. Like if, if the, if the bar is enjoy eight. I mean, I mean, heck, it's Love going to have six. I mean, it, I mean, it's going to have the Riddler in it. You haven't seen so the I, Riddler on screen since Jim Carrey. Like it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. And then the Penguin. Penguin hasn't been on in a long time either. Penguin's in it. Penguin's in it. Okay, you know we we have to start putting spoilers up. I don't. I didn't want to know that. We we have to stop now. It's it's in there, Jared. But... I didn't know. And now I do. <laughs> you want me to tell you who else is in there? No. The bat. No, I don't. <laughs> I, I yelled over it. I didn't hear it. I yelled over you. All right. All right. That's all the questions I have to hear today. Sorry. Jared. Hey, gangland, I apologize, but it, I'll fix that in post. It won't hurt anyone else. You, on the other hand, you got it live. <laughs> all right, Jared. That's all. That's all I got, Sherry. Let's go ahead. And, let's go ahead and end today's episode. Uh, by the way, uh, three point shooters by percentage. Um, not going to count, not going to count Jimmy Sotos. He's not really shot enough of them to count. Technically it's 60% right now, but not enough of a sample size. Right. So I don't think I'm going to count yeah. that. Uh, Malachi Brenham at 44% is in first place. Cedric Russell in second place at 43%. Then Wheeler at 39%. Liddell at 38%. Arns at 35, Young at 32, uh, Michi is also at 32, EJ Brown's at 25. That, those are your th three-point shooters. All right. So, yeah, that's... Uh... That's it. That's the that's the show. Join our Discord server. Uh, if you haven't listened to, if you didn't listen to the basketball episode, the Discord server in the month of March is going to choose my next tattoo. We're doing a bracket. We're doing a March Madness style bracket. It's only eight teams, so okay. It's it's a it's 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 a it's an abbreviated. It's an abridged NCAA uh, style bracket. But still, it's an eight-team bracket, and uh, the members of the Discord server are going to choose my next tattoo. That's a thing we're actually doing. I'm stupid, or I'm crazy, or, or I'm a genius. It's probably not the last one. <laughs> so, uh, discord.sloopcast.com to uh, participate in choosing my next tattoo. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I really don't, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I had I had the two from the previous one that should have just did one, and that way I had one here. But no, I I, I really don't. I really don't. <laughs> you know what, Kyle? That is totally fair. And maybe you know you just learn for next time, right? Um, well, maybe I could say sorry, something. Sorry. About, maybe, hold on, hold on, maybe I could say something. There's, about there's the, currently gold in the, in the chat. If you want to do that for us, Sloopcast. Apparently, apparently, well, apparently in the NFL scouting combine, uh, a lot of in Wilson showed off their speed. They were in the, officially in the four threes. So I, I think that was a pretty good showing for, for both of them there. Uh, you know, Nicholas Petit Free. uh, did pretty well as well from, from what I read. So yeah, I'm, I think overall, I think the, I think Buckeyes did, did their, did their job, did, did what they needed to the, at the uh, scouting combine. There you go. Um, Buck, uh, gangland asked our resident discord lawyer, Buckeye Esquire, if uh, he can receive compensation uh, for me yelling into the microphone 
uh, and Buckeye Esquire. I'm only going to read the first half of this or probably not even half. Actually, it's probably it's much, much, much less than half. Uh, but he says, regrettably, you're likely uh, you likely assumed the risk of Jared yelling. There is a precedent. <laughs> like if you if you didn't want to hear me yell, you 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 shouldn't be here. <laughs> I think is what he said. He said it legally, but it's just like. You failed to recognize the pattern here. That's on you. Yeah. All right, Kyle, that's it. Does anyone have a music recommendation down in the chat? Anyone? We just did that one. (laughs) All right. Um, We are going to do a... I didn't prepare anything. Guys, help me out. Oh, Austin's not in here. He's always the one that helps me out on these things. All right. Um, Kyle, talk for a moment. Just talk about something. Uh, talking about something. So so the month of March here, uh, our, especially our weekday episodes, going to be a little sporadic. We may have a, may have a Wednesday. It could be Thursday. It could be Friday. Uh, apologize for the inconsistent of when they're going to be posted. Um, but we'll just a lot of real life work happening this this month here so uh just keep an eye out keep an eye out uh every day for any new episodes for this month and uh we'll try to get back to our regular routine back in april again there we go uh tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a columbus based band called room and board that is room ampersand board uh, the name of the song we're going to be play that we're going to play is called Propaganda of the Deed. That is Propaganda of the Deed by the Columbus based band Room and Board. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Room and Board. <laughs>